Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're talking about real-time collaboration. Hi, my name is Guy Train, and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today I want to talk about real-time collaboration. Collaboration is one of those 21st century skills that are very important to develop in kids. Some of it happens in real time in classrooms. Another way to do it, whether between professionals, teachers and other professionals, or between students in the same classroom, can happen on devices. And the iPad is one example of, of these devices. And in the iPad, again, as so many times uh, it happens, it's actually much easier for kids, especially young kids, to collaborate and work together. What I love about these collaboration tools is actually for the first time, it enables students to be on multiple devices, work on the same project, and really collaborate, not just divide it up into sections and each person does a section and then they all put it together. They can actually brainstorm together, do great things together at the same time. And that's, that's key for success because usually when we have devices, what we would have is a group of kids, but only one of them has access to the device. So that person really takes over. And if you have a few kids working together, you can see how more and more of them become less interested, less engaged. This is a way to keep everybody engaged. So let's start. The first thing I want to talk about is an app called TalkBoard. TalkBoard is an app that allows you to uh, have a shared canvas. So you can invite collaborators. Uh, you can do that with a chat or a, a text message or even a, an email, and they all share this kind of space. You see it's an empty space, there's not much on it. You can choose the tool, you have tools in different colors. And um, I love this one because it actually creates nice uh, effects, but you can write, obviously. And you can see it's very sensitive to the touch. It's very attractive as a way uh, to write or draw. You can, of course, use the eraser and erase what you just wrote. And the great thing is multiple people can be on the same canvas at the same time, contributing, erasing, adding. You can even use it with art and actually draw there. And you can see that you can use different colors. So if you want to know who contributed what, they can each use a different color. Uh, you can obviously uh, make this disappear. And then what is important, uh, as usual, is that this gets saved on the app so you can actually share it later. So this one is called TalkBoard. The next one I want to talk about is something we've actually talked about quite a bit, and that is Google Drive. Uh, but I do want to highlight one of the features of the Google Drive is the ability to collaborate and to share. Some of it is just sharing documents between people or sharing folders, which has been added a few months ago. That ability to share folders and anything that's put in that folder is actually shared with everybody that's a member of that group. But what is even better is the fact that once you work on a document, a document that's fully on a Google Drive, what you can do is you can have multiple people viewing it at the same time and multiple people editing the product at the same time. So Google Drive really serves as a great place to do some collaboration. And what's great about it is it does so many other things that this is just one more thing it does. It's a great tool to use in classrooms. If you do have access to Google Drive, then try to use that as a collaboration tool and have kids co-create documents. If you don't have it yet, that's another great reason to get Google Drive to function in your school. So that is Google Drive. Uh, the last piece that I want to talk about is actually not an app. And this is a website that used to be called Wallwisher, is now called Padlet. I've talked about it in the past. But I do think that it's important uh, to highlight what it does. And this is, again, a shared collaboration tool. One person has to own that wall. And then you can share it with everybody else. Anybody 
entering that web address into their browser will be able to have access, see, and be able to contribute. If you double tap anywhere on the wall, you get a little place to write, so you can write, you know, any comment you, uh, that you want, or you can bring in a link, you can paste a URL from uh, anywhere that you picked up something, whether it's an image you found online and that you can share, remember to uh, make sure that it is not copyright protected, and you can also bring in any website or anything else, or let's see if I have something here. Um, it's bringing it in, or you can actually upload something. So it'll say, okay, bring in the file or browse, and obviously that will work a lot better on a computer where you have full access to your files. Uh, here you will have to first copy and then paste it back in. You can see that here we brought in a website and it, you can access it from here. Now, again, the great thing is not just being able to create this canvas with pieces from different places, but the ability of different participants to contribute to this, so you would have contributions from different students into this very same board, and then that product can be shared with a teacher, and you can see there's the little share button, and you can share it on social media, you can share it uh, you can export it to an actual document, a PDF, uh, or you can email it or you can even print it. So there's lots of options what to do with this product and communicate it to others, communicate it to a teacher if it's a classroom assignment and things like that. So this one is called Padlet. It's at padlet.com. It is not an app, but I think it's a great collaboration tool that you might want to consider for your classroom. So today we talked about three ways you can collaborate in real time using technology and we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.